Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting game, uh, this time between future world champion Garry Kasparov and the former world champion Tigran Petrosian. Uh, the game was played in 1981 in Moscow and it was a Soviet team championship. There were four teams and each team consisted of 10 players. So this is uh, one of the more interesting games as again it's uh, kind of a clash of styles and uh, like I said it's played in 1981 so it's some four years before Kasparov takes away the world championship title from Anatoly Karpov. And it's been already 11 years uh, since Petrosian lost his uh, world championship title uh, to Boris Spassky. So I guess, uh, you know, who, who, who is in top form here, I guess Petrosian is a bit more out of shape and uh, Kasparov is a bit more in shape, you know, uh, going into his prime. Uh, but uh, definitely an interesting game and uh, I, do, I do hope you enjoy it. So Kasparov has the white pieces and he opens with the d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4, and e6 now. Uh, we have knight to f3, this is the anti Nimzovich uh, variation, as, it, uh, as it's not the usual knight to c3 allowing bishop to b4. Uh, here we have b6 by Petrosian, and we have a3. Uh, this is the Petrosian variation of the Queen's Indian defense, and uh, Kasparov really wants to show uh, a former world champion who's boss as he plays the Petrosian variation against Tigran Petrosian himself. So bishop to b7, knight to c3, uh, we have d5, c captures on d5, knight captures on d5, e3, uh, bishop to e7, this is still all uh, Petrosian's variation of the Queen's Indian, and uh, here we have bishop to b5 check, here Kasparov uh, uh, leaves the variation, and what's the idea of the bishop b5 move? Well, uh, it does have a certain poison to it, as if you play knight to c6, uh, blocking this check, you lose the game immediately after queen to a4. Now there's a double attack on the knight, after you defend it with queen to, e7, queen to d7, uh, now you get knight to e5, and now your queen is attacked, the knight is also attacked, also the knight is pinned, so you have to capture the knight, and after you lose the queen, you recapture with the knight, and you have two pieces for the queen, uh, but unfortunately that's not enough, this is a winning position for white. Uh, also, after bishop to b5 check, you don't want to block with knight to d7. And because again, you get knight to d5, and that knight is now pinned, also the threat is bishop captures. Uh, and after you defend this with uh, another knight coming to f6, now the knight is defended. Uh, now white can simply push e4, and this is, uh, this is an excellent position for white. Uh, white, can, white can always play knight to c6 to either win the dark square bishop, or Petrosian will be forced to capture with the light square bishop, so either way, uh, Kasparov will win the bishop pair here. So after bishop to b5, Petrosian plays c6, and we have bishop back to d3. Knight to c3, capturing, b captures on c3, and c5. Uh, Petrosian immediately challenges Kas Kasparov's center, and releases his light square bishop. So uh, Kasparov castles, Petrosian castles, and queen to c2 now, attacking the h7 pawn. Uh, g6, defending, and now comes e4. Uh, we have knight to c6, bishop to h6, attacking the rook, rook to e8, and here Kasparov plays rook f to d1. And uh, it's a very interesting position. Uh, can Petrosian capture the pawn on d4? Uh, if Petrosian captures, c captures on d4, you get c captures on d4, and after knight captures and knight captures, uh, you get bishop, uh, queen captures on d4, and now bishop to b5. Uh, attacking the rook on e8, also attacking the queen on d4. Uh, but it's not all so simple. After queen captures, uh, bishop, uh, queen captures, and bishop captures, uh, now bishop captures rook on e8. B rook captures bishop on e8, and if you look at the position now, uh, yes, Kasparov is up the exchange, uh, but Petrosian has the bishop pair and uh, is also up two pawns. So a bishop pair and being up two pawns in Petrosian's hands, uh, I don't know if if that's an endgame Kasparov wants to play. Uh, but uh, either way, after this rook after d1, uh, Petrosian doesn't go for it. He plays queen to c7, and now queen to e2. Uh, we have rook e to d8, now there is a threat of capturing on d4, and Kasparov plays queen to e3 to defend it. And here we have a, a move only Petrosian would, would dare to play uh, against a player like Kasparov. Here Petrosian plays e5. And what do you do here? Uh, well, the immediate uh, reaction to everyone is, well, of course, I want to push d5 and create a pass pawn. And uh, this is exactly what Kasparov plays. Uh, trading down in the center doesn't really favor white, as any exchanges in the center will favor black, uh, since white's main advantage is uh, this big pawn center. 
So Kasparov pushes d5 and here Petrosian plays knight to a5. Now why did Petrosian allow this, such a center? Uh, well his idea is he wants to push c4 and uh, create a very nice outpost for this knight on b3. Uh, Kasparov does stop this by playing c4 himself, but uh, by, by stopping one threat you allow, you allow another. Now Petrosian plays knight to b3. Uh, attacking the rook and uh, whenever he feels like it he will simply remaneuver the knight to d4 another beautiful square where it will stay for as long as Petrosian likes unless Kasparov captures it uh, but then Petrosian will recapture and create a nice pass pawn of his own so rook to a2 and uh, not immediately going for knight to d4 but first f6 uh, we have h4 now by Kasparov uh, as f6 did weaken the king side Kasparov immediately pushes h4 uh, to, to try and break down, down the king's defenses. And here another very nice move by Petrosian in his own style, he plays bishop to c8. As uh, here you can apply the principle of the least active, uh, active piece, for example. Uh, you're, okay, your least active piece is obviously the rook on a8, but you can't help this piece at the moment, so bishop to c8. Uh, as the knight is on f3, Kasparov just pushed h4, so it would be very nice if you could play bishop to g4, since Kasparov doesn't have the option of playing pawn to h3 anymore, since he already pushed it on h4. Uh, so Kasparov decides to prevent this by playing rook to b1. He forces the knight onto the d4 square, we have knight to d4, and now knight captures. He gets rid of the knight, so Petrosian doesn't have bishop g4, uh, pinning his rook that was on d1. We have c captures on d4, and queen to g3 now. So the bishop isn't uh, able to develop uh, on g4. Uh, here we have bishop to f8, offering a trade of bishops. Uh, Kasparov uh, declines this, he plays bishop to d2, and now bishop to d6. And uh, here, yeah, you, you probably want to push h5 at some point, but not now. If h5, then simply g5, and there's really nothing there. Uh, so first Kasparov plays rook to f1. He will prepare f4 and then only after he is ready will he continue pushing his pawns. Uh, queen to g7. Uh, we have a4 now. Uh, a5, not allowing uh, a5 by Kasparov himself. And rook to b2 now. Uh, attacking the pawn on b6. And here Petrosian can prevent this with bishop to c7 if he also wants to keep an eye on this e5 pawn and the f4 square uh, but he decides to play bishop to c5 as Kasparov would play f4 regardless of if Petrosian retreated with the bishop on c5 or c7. So we have bishop to c5, f4 by Kasparov and here bishop to d7. Uh, here uh, Petrosian doesn't think that f4 really deserves attention, so instead he plays bishop to d7 going after Kasparov's undefended pawn. Uh, Kasparov here plays h5 and this is, this is quite a position to study as uh, what happens if g captures an h5? Why is, why is Kasparov giving up a pawn uh, if already his pawn is attacked on a4? Uh, well, let's, let's see what's going on here. If g captures an h5, then queen to h4. Uh, the idea is rook to f3 followed by rook to g3 as the queen and the king are, are pretty lined up here on the g file. Uh, but uh, Petrosian stopped this relatively easy with bishop to g4, preventing the rook from coming to f3 and also protecting his h5 pawn. Uh, here f captures on e5, f captures on e5 and now rook to f6. It's a very interesting line. Uh, Bishop to e7, and now the other rook captures on b6. Rook captures on b6. So here Kasparov uh, could uh, give up the exchange. Bishop captures, rook captures, and after rook to f8, now simply play uh, rook back to b6. And now he's threatening bishop to h6, and it's a, it's a pretty wild attack for white. Uh, let's say bishop to f3, uh, now stopping bishop to h6 with the threat of queen g2 checkmate. So let's say bishop to f1 defending and rook 8 to b8. Rook, uh, bishop to h6 now and uh, after queen to g4, uh, rook captures, rook captures as of course you can't capture the queen, then rook captures on f8 would be checkmate. So rook captures on b8 and now queen to f6. And this is a very delicate position. Uh, something that could uh, happen if uh, Kasparov, uh, if Petrosian decided to play this g captures on h5. As now, um, you can never really 
do anything with this rook, rook b2, rook b1, because you're getting checkmated, queen to f8, checkmate. Uh, the rook can't really help out here. Uh, you can't move the queen uh, from the g file because queen to g7 will be checkmate. And Kasparov does have these uh, very nice passed pawns. So, if anything, uh, Kasparov definitely is better here and uh, even if Petrosian could draw this game or, or do something with it, uh, it would be due to his extreme uh, defensive capabilities. But uh, it's a definitely a very passive uh, position to play for Petrosian. And uh, since Petrosian didn't go for this, obviously he didn't like what he saw. So after this h5 move, Petrosian doesn't capture. Uh, rather, uh, he plays bishop captures on a4. He grabs a pawn. And why not? Uh, Kasparov pushes h6. Uh, and of course you can't capture. If you capture on h6, then you get f captures on e5. Now there's a discovery on the queen on h6, and after queen to h5, now you simply capture on f6. Uh, bishop to e8, stopping f7, but now comes e5, and if you look at this monster center, this is completely resignable. Uh, e6 is coming, f7 is coming. Uh, this would be terrible. So after h6, uh, Petrosian goes for queen to c7, keeping an eye on that e5 square. Uh, we have f5 by Kasparov, and uh, here it's, uh, it's not easy to decide what to do. Petrosian did grab a pawn on a4, and now he has to really, really figure out what to do. Uh, here he played g5, and uh, Kasparov captured the pawn. He sacrificed a piece here. Uh, we have f captures on g5, and now queen captures on g5. Uh, here Petrosian went king to f8. If you play king to h8, this loses. If king to h8, then comes queen to f6 check. You can't block with the queen because of the pawn on h6. Uh, king g8 and now rook to f3. Now the rook is coming to g3. Queen f7, rook g3 check. Uh, king to f8, now comes queen h8 check. Uh, king e7, now you capture with the check. Queen captures on e5 check. Uh, king goes back and now rook captures uh, on b6. It's a very important move. Uh, deflecting the bishop from the d6 square and uh, also you're threatening rook to f6 to win the queen. So bishop captures and now d6. Now there's the threat of queen to h8 because now the d7, d7 square is no longer available for the king. So black would have to capture here and after queen captures with check, uh, now it doesn't really matter what you play. If you play queen e7 then rook g8 wins the queen. And uh, if you play something like uh, king to e8, then you get queen captures on b6, and uh, and this is all over. Uh, as uh, wh white is uh, much better here, rook is coming to g7, there's nothing to do here for black. So after this queen to g5, after Kasparov sacrificed a piece, uh, Petrosian played the correct king to f8, uh, and he started his king march. Uh, we have queen to f6 check king to e8 and here uh, we have rook to a1. Uh, you don't really gain anything by delivering any more checks. If you play queen to h8 then king simply escapes, king d7, king c8 uh, and if you play queen to e6 then simply queen to e8 defends everything. So Kasparov tried rook to a1 and rook to a1 is an extremely poisonous move. As uh, the bishop is attacked you can't really defend it. If you try to defend it as these squares are protected by the pawns if you play something like bishop to d7 uh, then you get queen to h8 check uh, after the bishop blocks you capture on h7 uh, and after queen tries to tries to help out uh, the the black king now you get f6 and uh, it's it, this is pretty terrible queen captures rook to f1 and uh, the queen can't really move as queen to f7 will be checkmate so after this rook to a1 move uh, petrosian doesn't care about this bishop, he plays queen to e7. And uh, what's the idea here? Uh, why is he offering a trade of queens? Uh, well, if queen captures on e7 and king captures on e7 and of course rook captures on a4, winning back the piece, uh, then rook to d6 going for the h6 pawn, uh, g3 making room for that rook to come into the game, rook captures. Uh, the, material the material here would be equal, but uh, it's, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, the rooks, uh, both players have two rooks, uh, opposite colored bishops are on the board, uh, but uh, there is this outside pawn and it's uh, hard to say, rook is coming to g8, it, it, would be, it would be a tough game. But for some reason Kasparov isn't interested in this, he still wants to really win this game. So he plays queen to e6 and uh, he, he offers an exchange on e6. So 
uh, Petrosian isn't interested in this. He plays rook to d6. Again, he forces Kasparov to either capture on e7 or, or get out of here. Uh, queen to g8 was played. Uh, we have king, queen to f8 and now queen to g3. Uh, we have queen captures on h6 and now rook captures on a4. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is a pretty weird move by Kasparov as uh, he he might have he might still have some chances with queen to g8 check and then the queen has to go back and maybe he could exchange queens and still still try to play this game uh, but for some reason he played rook captures on a4 and after queen to c2 check queen to c1 check uh, he played king to f2 and now after Petrosian captured the rook on b2. Uh, Kasparov resigned the game, as now he's, he's not down a piece, he is now down a whole rook. And, uh, I, I mean, okay, maybe, maybe maybe the king could hide, maybe the queen could still pose some threats, uh, but he saw that uh, after this check, and after king to g1, after queen to c1 check, uh, if you go to the h file, then you get rook to h6, and it's all over, and if you play king to f2, now you get uh, king to f7. And now there are two terrible threats uh, here Petrosian has, and that's queen to d2 check, followed by queen to d1 check, picking up the other rook. And the other threat is, of course, rook to g8. Uh, so if you play rook to a2, you get a rook out of the way, you get rook to g8, attacking the queen, and after the queen moves, uh, rook, to, rook to h6. Uh, and white is without a move. I mean, it's not like white needs a move, white is down a rook, but uh, th there are no tricks or anything Kasparov can try here. Uh, even even the, <laughs> the obvious rook to c2 falls to queen captures on c2. Uh, bishop captures now d3, this comes with check. Uh, king moves, bishop b4 check, king has to go. Uh, if king goes uh, to d1, uh, then simply rook to h1 will be checkmate after the queen blocks. So you probably have to play king to f1, or or you could go king to f2, let's say king f2. Uh, D captures on c2, and after queen to e3, which is the only square from where you can prevent Petrosian from promoting his pawn to a queen, you get bishop to c5. Uh, this wins the queen, and there is nothing more for Kasparov, Kasparov here to do. So uh, a brilliant attacking game by, by future world champion Gary Kasparov, but uh, an even better defending game by former world champion Tignan Petrosian. Uh, there is this uh, one moment in the game, it was uh, move 35. And uh, here um, it was after this king to f8 move uh, where Kasparov played queen to f6 check. Uh, later Kasparov said that if he played f6 that he would win the game, uh, because after Queen to f7, uh, queen captures on e5, and after bishop to d6, uh, queen to g5, and Petrosian offering a trade of queens, now queen to g7 check is coming. Queen captures, pawn captures, and after king to g8, now uh, rook to e2, threatening e5, and uh, then e6 and f7. Uh, and after this is blocked with bishop to e5, now rook to f5. And uh, here Petrosian would ha have to probably give up one piece for, for some of these pawns, either by playing rook to d6 or by capturing uh, on f6, uh, as his bishop is threatened here. Uh, but whether, whether Kasparov would actually win this against Petrosian and his brilliant defensive capabilities, uh, you know, that, that's, another, that's another question. So yeah. Uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, former world champion Tigran Petrosian versus future world champion Gary Kasparov. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon, probably with another classic.